the weight loss industry would become the weight gain industry and skin lightening treatments would become skin darkening treatments. Hi everyone, welcome to The Humane Factor. I'm Namrata, a human rights lawyer and activist. Now growing up, most of the books I read and movies and TV shows I watched generally featured the same types of protagonists, especially women, white and thin. And this shaped our generation's views on what was considered attractive. Think Gossip Girl or 90210, The O.C. and One Tree Hill. Now there were a few diverse characters thrown in the background, but most of them were side characters, never the protagonist really. And watching these TV shows and movies shaped our way of thinking with girls wanting to be thin and light skinned and guys finding these traits attractive. I don't think we realize how much mainstream media influences our perceptions and views. But think about this for a moment. When a child is born, they don't know anything. They don't know that being thin is beautiful or white skin is beautiful. These preferences are shaped by the information that's fed to them, the information that they gradually absorb from their surroundings and various sources. What if a child grew up consuming content that shows curvy or larger bodies and darker skin? What if they think bigger bodies and dark skin is beautiful? then the dynamics would be reversed completely, wouldn't it? With everyone wanting to be bigger and darker, the weight loss industry would become the weight gain industry and skin lightening treatments would become skin darkening treatments. Fashion models would be asked to size up instead of size down if they want to walk the ramp. Sounds kind of radical, doesn't it? Perhaps this does exist in some parallel universe. Now society's preference for svelte bodies and light skin is shaped by the content we consume, the content that is available to us, what we read, watch and listen to. In recent years, there has been a slight turn. We're slowly starting to see people of color, LGBTQ characters and the disabled community on screen from popular shows like Riverdale and Atypical and even the much anticipated Gossip Girl reboot, we have casts that better represent the diversity of cultures. But even in these TV shows, we still see people of color and LGBTQ characters as side characters. They're either the best friend or the roommate or the neighbor. Now Mindy Kaling's Never Have I Ever became one of the first teen TV series to not just feature a brown girl as a lead character, but also have an extremely diverse cast featuring black, LGBTQ and Asian characters among others. Then there's Quantico featuring Priyanka Chopra as the lead. But you can count the number of TV shows and movies featuring diverse characters as lead roles on your fingers. Now aside from diversity in terms of color, gender and sexual orientation, one area where mainstream media is absolutely lacking is body diversity. Even when they show diverse characters, most TV shows and movies portray characters with a well-muscled physique or a slender body frame. So this inclusivity we're seeing today excludes individuals who don't fit the conventional standards of being thin or athletic. Now there are a few shows that have characters that don't fit what's perpetuated as the ideal body image but it's more in peripheral roles like Barb in Stranger Things or Amy in The Big Bang Theory. 
So the mainstream media fails to represent what a good portion of people look like today. And that's something I think we should talk about. I think we should have that conversation. Why does body diversity in mainstream media matter? And what's problematic about the body diversity we're seeing today? Now for teenagers, representation is so much deeper than viewing relatable images on screen. Teens often internalize the messages they see, which can affect the way they view themselves and their self-esteem. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, consistent exposure to idealized bodies in the media has contributed to higher dissatisfaction in young adults. Now, of course, there have been a couple of movies featuring protagonists with bigger bodies. But the problem with this is that in many of these movies featuring plus-sized characters, their character or the story revolves around their weight. Or I'm going to feel worse about myself when no one's interested because I'm fat. And that's extremely problematic because they're drawing attention to the person's size as something that's different from what's considered normal. For instance, the movie Dumpling, starring Rebel Wilson, is about an overweight girl who's the daughter of a former beauty queen. She feels judged about her weight and is embarrassed by her mother's pageant world. Now, the movie is about how she ultimately navigates her identity as a person of size. Then there's I Feel Pretty, starring Amy Schumer, who again feels insecure about her body and appearance. And much of the storyline is focused on how she deals with that. Now, the problem with this type of narrative is that even when larger people are given lead roles, the role has too much to do with their so-called fatness and how they're able to overcome their low self-esteem or achieve things despite their size, how they're able to fall in love or accomplish something despite their size. We think it's body positivity, but it actually isn't. This despite their size narrative basically pushes the idea that bigger people fall in love or achieve things because they have some other factor to compensate for their fatness. So in a sense, what they're saying is that fat people have to be funnier, smarter or have nicer personalities than people who are in their size in order to be liked. You guys, I'm like really smart now. Now the second problem with this narrative is that it puts forward this false idea that people with larger bodies have self-esteem issues, but if you lose weight, you can get all the confidence in the world. Now this is far from the truth. Losing weight is not going to help you love your body. You are not going to gain confidence just because you lost weight. You could lose all the weight in the world and still be miserable and with low self-esteem. Now in some movies, characters might not fit societal standards of what's considered thin and so they're insecure about their bodies. But if you look at them, they're actually not overweight by any means. So when you see movies where the character isn't really overweight but feels insecure about their size, it can be extremely triggering for people with bigger bodies and again pushes forward this narrative that having an average body type isn't enough if you want to be desirable or sexy. For instance, in the movie I Feel Pretty, Amy Schumer's character is not overweight by any means. She appears to represent an average body type that lots of people have. What are you talking about? You're not fat. Now, we saw something similar in Bridget Jones' diary where Bridget was not overweight by any means but still is portrayed as a chubby girl who's fixated on losing weight. How on earth are people who are bigger than Amy Schumer's character or Bridget Jones in either of these movies supposed to feel when they watch how these characters struggle to accept their bodies? 
Now, another problematic portrayal of bigger bodies is something we saw in this movie called Brittany Runs a Marathon. Now, this movie is about how a woman receives a wake up call when the doctor tells her how unhealthy she is, and she's then motivated to lose weight and takes up running to prepare for a marathon. Now, the problem with this narrative is that it pushes forward the notion that being heavy or fat is equal to being unhealthy and unfit. And again, this is far, far from the truth. I've spoken about this in my video about diet culture and I'll tell you this again. One's weight has nothing to do with their health or fitness level. There are lots of heavy people who are healthy and fit and lots of thin people who are unhealthy and unfit. I've seen people with bigger bodies who are so fit and flexible. They can bend their bodies like pretzels and do crazy, unimaginable things with their bodies. Likewise, I've also seen lots of thin people who aren't very fit. There's this article I read on Runner's World written by Kate Brown, a plus-size runner who finished a 5K during a 48.6-mile marathon. She and many other runners prove that running a marathon has nothing to do with your weight. And surprise, surprise, there are tons of plus-sized runners who take up running because they love running and not because they want to lose weight. And they are much fitter than lots of other people. Now Today, we are moving towards the health at every size approach where the idea of being thin is disassociated from being healthy or fit. And we are now learning to love exercise without associating it with weight loss. And movies that push forward this narrative that being fat is equal to being unhealthy or unfit is both dangerous and untrue. If this is a real ride, do you think this is a step forward or backwards for equality? It's certainly not a step forward. I think it's about time we normalize bigger bodies in mainstream media by not just featuring protagonists with bigger bodies, but also giving them well-rounded characters and stories that don't revolve around their size. One show that comes to my mind is a TV series I used to watch on Disney when I was a kid. That's so Raven. Now, this used to be one of my favorite shows. The protagonist, Raven, didn't conform to societal perceptions of being thin and the TV show wasn't about her size at all. Raven was just a high school girl navigating life through high school. And the show revolved around her psychic visions and all the trouble she'd get into and just normal high school stuff. And that's what we need today. We need more TV shows, movies and books where bigger and diverse bodies are shown without making it about their weight and without making it about how they've got other special qualities to compensate for their size, which is what draws people to them. Give me a bigger bodied Hermione or a bigger bodied Carrie Bradshaw or a bigger Serena and Blair. Show me characters with diverse body types so that we can find beauty in diversity and everybody can find something to relate to. And don't make the story about the character's size or weight because it's about time we see authentic characters on screen. It's about time our future generations don't grow up reading what we read and watching what we watched. It's about time that kids learn from a very young age to love their bodies and to love different sizes, shapes and colors. Because you know what's the most beautiful aspect of all of us? It's our ability to love both ourselves and others. And it's about time we let that beauty shine. So I'm sending you guys all my love and thank you so much for supporting my channel. It means a lot to me. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button so that you can join me on this journey of love and kindness. See you soon.